Editing a Milky Way Nightscape in a natural way was one of the hardest aspects of Nightscape photography that I learned, despite all of the tutorials that can be found online. Developing your own technique will take time, practice, and blending the aspects you like from multiple other photographers. I've spent the last six years honing the technique I use for editing Milky Way photos, and although I expect it to still evolve, I want to walk you through my current process in the hope that it helps you find your own creative style. For this video, I want to walk through the technique that I used to edit this image here from Big Bend National Park, uh, combining this foreground that you can already see here over in Lightroom with a series of Milky Way photos that I took. So the first thing that I want to walk through briefly is just a quick overrun of how I set up this photo, as well as the settings that I used for both the foreground and for the Milky Way shots. So the setup on this, um, as you can tell, the old house that's there is lit up. Um, I used a couple of little 96 LED panels to give low level lighting. So essentially what that means is when I was back over on the hill to take these photos, the light that was on the building was almost unnoticeable to the naked eye. So that helps you get that blend that is a little bit more natural that you'll see whenever we get to the final image. So to set up this shot, what I did was I used a 50 millimeter lens. This was shot on a Nikon Z7 II at a aperture of f2.8, an ISO of 800, and a 240 second exposure to ensure that I got enough light to be able to bring the details out of the landscape. Then for the series of photos for the Milky Way, I switched to a ISO of 10,000 using the same 50 millimeter lens, not moving my tripod, setting my aperture to f2.8, and taking six second exposures in order to minimize the star trailing. And with that, I took, it looks like about 23 images with those settings that we'll go through here in a minute. And I'll walk through how I stack those in Sequator. So let's jump in here first and just take a look here at this foreground image. What I wanna do with the settings here is obviously I need to bring up the exposure a little bit. So I'll keep bringing that up. I'm not worried about the Milky Way up there or the stars blowing out because once we bring this into Photoshop, we'll blend with the Milky Way images. So I'm gonna bring this up to about here for right now. I'll be honest, this is probably gonna be a little too bright for what we need. Um, and then I wanna bring the white balance actually down more into the blues and the purples. Uh, that way it's not as harsh with the yellows uh, once we blend in the Milky Way. So I think I'm good with that. Um, one thing we'll have to go through and clean up once I'm in Lightroom is all of these uh, hot pixels. As you can already tell, I mean, the details uh, pretty good considering this is a 240 second exposure in the middle of some of the darkest skies in Texas and the United States. So we've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of texture in here, um, a little bit of clarity. The other thing we could try playing around with is seeing if the dehaze helps us in any way, um, maybe a little bit, and then we can play around with the vibrance. I don't think I'm gonna wanna do too much with saturation, because again, I want this to be kind of a neutral tone with the Milky Way. Even that, I mean, that 12, I think is a little too high. Uh, but we'll leave that where it's at for right now. I think I wanna add just a little bit here. Um, this big dark spot here, this is your shadows. I'm just trying to bump those up a little bit. And then down here in the detail, we can try to sharpen this. Um, it will be pretty grainy though, and we're probably honestly gonna have to do more uh, noise reduction here than anything, just to try to make this look a little bit cleaner. So. I think I'm good with that. Like I said, hot pixels, we'll deal with those in a little bit over in Photoshop. All right, so I'm happy with those right now. This next step, what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna take a mental note here of these file names so that we can open them over in Sequator. So we're gonna take all of these. This is 668 through, let's see if we can get the number to pop up, 691. So let's go over into Sequator now, and we're gonna add in our star files. So let's go to star images, 
give it a second there to open up. And I shot this in 2022 at Big Bend. And these are Z7 II photos. All right, so I've got 668 down here and 691. We're gonna go ahead and open up all of those. So these are gonna get loaded in so that we can stack the stars. All right, nothing too fancy there right now. Um, so for this particular set, I actually didn't take any noise images um, or any vignetting images. So nothing for me to do on that front. Uh, what I do want to go down here, I want to make sure this is set to accumulation so that it actually stacks. And I want to freeze the ground on here. So, and we're going to mark this as selective. So when I go to sky region, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually paint this out. So all you have to do here is just left click and hold on your mouse and just paint in where the sky is. And you can make this paintbrush smaller just by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. This doesn't have to be perfect because we'll be able to clean up most of this in Photoshop if there's any errors. Go ahead and just make this a little bit tighter. This image, I'll be honest, is one of the easier ones just because of how sharp the line contrasts between this mountain and the Milky Way. Uh, but if you had more stuff sticking out, you could go in there and do finer cleanup. You can also right click and that will allow you to basically erase the selection that you've made on the stars. All right, so after I've gotten that, in my case, for the rest of these settings, I like to leave auto brightness to on. Um, it just depends on the photo. A lot of the times, honestly, when I'm going through Sequator, I'll try multiple different runs just to make sure that I get the image that I want. I usually leave reduced light pollution to off and I leave enhanced starlight off most of the time. So this is actually pretty good here, I think, with the settings. So we'll just go ahead and select our output. Um, a new folder here for this video. All right, so now that we've got the output, we'll just go ahead and click Run. All right, so six minutes and 57 seconds later, let's see what we've got here. So this should work out fine. We can go through and we can edit the rest of this over in Lightroom. All right, so now we need to blend this photo with the TIFF file that we just created over in Sequator. So we'll go here, we'll go to Edit In and Open as a Smart Object over in Photoshop. All right, so we've got that there. All right, so let's go ahead and import our photo that we just created. Go over here to Sequator and Video Edit. And all I'm gonna do is just drag this into here. In fact, I'm gonna actually hold Shift down so that we don't change our aspect ratio. And we'll stretch this down to the correct size. So to get the actual mountain lined up, we'll switch this over to the difference mode just so that we can get the mountain as true as possible to what we actually expect it. So you'll see there, I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit and we're just gonna make this match up. And it can take just a little bit of playing around with. What we really want is the stars to actually probably just be a little bit below the outline of this mountain just so that we don't have any funky edges to have to go in and edit. So we'll leave that the way it is. We'll switch this back to normal mode. And I'm actually, for the moment, I'm actually gonna hide that one because what we wanna do here is we need to mask out this sky. So what I'm gonna do is actually use the wand tool and we're just gonna start making selections. So that first selection will get a pretty decent coverage, and then we're just gonna hold shift to continue to add to it until we get it 
kind of like that where it's gotten tight down around the mountain. At this point, the majority of stuff that it's missed is really up here in the stars. So what we can do is switch over to the lasso tool and now we're gonna hold down shift and we're just gonna go make a big circle around here just to try to pull in as much of the star details as we can. So you'll notice that got most of them, but then we've got to hold the alt key and zoom in. And there's some of the stuff that we need to go in here and just try to clean up a little bit more. So that's one area. Uh, you can see this area right here. So we're just going to make some detailed edits in here, or I'm sorry, some detailed selections uh, just to make this look as clean as we can before we pull in the Milky Way image. So this will take a minute, but in my opinion, it's worth the effort. Rather than trying to go in, use the sky mask tool where you're gonna end up with uh, some feathering along the edges. Uh, you'll see here where I kind of messed that up. So I'm just gonna hold the alt key with the lasso tool and just try to fill that back in. Again, I did the same thing right here. Just got moving too quick. Uh, so just important to go back and make those changes. A few more that we need to add over here. And this one's gonna be really tricky just because of that. Just because of that star that trailed. So just trying to get that star trail out of there so it's not visible here in a minute. This one's also kind of interesting. There's a gap in these rocks. Honestly, what we'll probably end up doing here is just filling this in because the image that we have from the stars, there's not gonna be enough detail there that we can fill that in. Oh, and it looks like I missed one there, so. No. All right, and it looks like we missed a little bit right here. So just adding that in, and I think we're good now. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and save this selection. We're just gonna call this sky. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and select the mask layer button and now we just got rid of the whole sky. So now we can go ahead and add this photo in. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna drag this to the bottom layer just so that the stars will show and then we'll have the image of just the foreground showing here. So as you can see, that's the one from the stack. This is the edited foreground, which honestly, as I'm looking at it right here, um, I'll be honest, I'm not super happy. It's probably a little bit overexposed. Uh, so I will need to go back in and edit that. So let's go ahead and take a look at editing the Milky Way portion here. All right, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we've got, we've got the video edit layer selected and we're gonna go to filter and we're gonna go to camera raw filter. And this is essentially gonna bring up the options that you're used to seeing out of Lightroom. So it is going to just show us this actual image and the hardest part to me here is just trying to ignore the foreground to try to figure out how we want to white balance this. So as far as light goes, um, actually I think what I want to do here is darken it a little bit. Um, we can bring out the contrast a little bit in the sky. I'll probably leave highlights maybe about right there. Um, I do want to darken the shadows in the sky, although this looks like it's mostly just darkening the foreground. Whites we can bring up a little bit, and then we'll bring down the blacks as well. As far as color goes, nothing that I want to do there. And the profile for this, I'll probably up the vibrance a little bit, and the saturation. I actually think I like this one more desaturated. But what I really want to get is more of that bluish color out of here. So just sliding the blue down just a hair and then bringing up the purples. So to me, that looks a lot more natural as far as a Milky Way goes. 
As the next thing, what we'll want to adjust, I do like to bring up the clarity, just a hair. Um, Dehaze we can bring up a little bit. We'll see how that kind of, to me, just makes the Milky Way pop a little bit more. And texture we can bring up. Let's see. Yeah, I think I actually like going down on this one. It makes it look a little hazier. The next thing to do here is to go into the curve. So the very first thing that I want to do is just try to bring up those highlights just a hair. And then what we want to do is go into each one of these color channels over here in the curve. And I'm going to start with bringing the reds up at the middle point, bringing the greens down. And it looks pretty ugly at this point. But then we can go ahead and mix. So I actually don't like that that's probably the wrong direction on the red. Let's pull the blues back away. Maybe a little too blue there. Could probably be happy right there. Let's adjust the greens again. Maybe too purple. So I think that's about where I like the color on this one. Kind of natural, but also gets a bluish tint into the Milky Way. Um, and this is where, to me, these three items right here, where you can really play with the color to get the color that is the way that you want it represented in your photo. Kind of look in here as I keep glancing back over to it, I think it's maybe too blue. So I'm gonna stick it right about there for now. As far as the color mixer goes, in most cases, I don't touch this one. Same with the color grading. You could go over here into the shadows um, and make some adjustments here just because, I mean, shadows are usually your bluer in color. Um, we can bring that down just a little bit in our shadows. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also bring the highlights up just a hair towards yellow, and then we're going to make an adjustment there. Um, that kind of helps separate that just a little bit more within the Milky Way. And let's go to the next. So detail sharpening. Don't do a whole lot here. I'll drop the radius all the way down and then bring the detail up. Uh, noise reduction, this is really where it gets a little interesting in here. Um, you'll see it's still fairly noisy considering this is 23 images that were stacked. Um, but what I want to do is we're going to actually bump this all the way up into about the 80s. And you'll see it started to smooth it out there. So if I go back, whoops. So if I go back, you'll see how much it smoothed that out. So let's bring up the detail up to 80. So the main thing that I want to look for here is just trying to back this off to my liking. So it started up here around 80, 90. We're going to back this off. You'll notice if I go all the way up with the detail, um, it starts getting almost like spider webby looking or like these weird marks in it. So what I'd like to do is just back those off to where they disappear. So with this one, that's about right here at 65. So for me, this is about good uh, with the image. If I really want to get some more noise reduction out of it, this is when you can go drop in some color noise reduction because that'll get rid of some of your red, green, blue spots that you might have in the Milky Way. So overall, I'm happy with where that's at for the Milky Way. And what we'll do here is we'll actually swap back out. So we'll click OK. This will update. All right, and now you've got your Milky Way over this foreground. So one of the things that I mentioned was that I feel like the foreground on this image is a little bit overexposed. So what I want to do here is go back over into the camera raw filter. We're going to click on this. And now I'm just going to try to adjust the foreground to a light that I feel looks more natural with the scene that we're in. So we're actually going to darken the foreground. And I believe, I think I want to bring up the highlights just a little bit more so that we get more pop out of the building down there at the bottom. We can also bring up the whites just a hair. And I think that's all the adjustment that I want to do to the foreground. However, I might do some color adjusting 
I want to play with that here in just a second. So I think that gets me a little bit better looking here. So we'll go ahead and zoom out. And the next thing that I want to do, we know that we've got that sky selection. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. It's going to take it a second to load in. And what I want to do is go up here to select and I want to go to inverse because I want to get this foreground and I want to make a color adjustment here. So I just want this adjustment to affect my foreground. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in color balance. And this is where we can go in and we can see how we want to make this look with the night scene that's above it. So for me, I really like getting into the purples. There's some people that like to go more towards the reds. I think it just depends on the scene. Red can definitely contrast well with the blues. Um, that can be red or orange. Uh, but for me, like I said, this one, really want to go, I think, more towards the purple and get a nice natural tone that correlates to the Milky Way. And that way it just doesn't look out of place. All right, so we'll stick with that one. I think I'm good where that one's at. And this last thing that I want to do, so there's all this weird fringing, I'll just call it that, uh, that's going on over here along the edges. And what we need to do is we need to go through and just clean that up. And the easiest way to do that, we're gonna jump back over here to this layer, which is the foreground layer. And what I wanna do here is just mask this out. So we're gonna to go to select, we're gonna take our sky image again. What I wanna do, I think, is tell this to expand. However, what I think is going on here is we might need to pull the paintbrush and let's just see if that will help me. There it is. Just help me paint that away more or less. So I'm gonna make my paintbrush a little bit smaller and then just brush through this until we get it to look about like what I'm thinking. So that looks a lot more blended now, which is what I want. I don't want super sharp edges. I want nice blended edges going in. Again, that one we'll go back and fix here in just a minute. We can actually try this. Hey, okay, that actually might work. So we'll stick with that. I think we just got lucky there that there were stars from this equator image that were able to fill it. Some of this is still looking funky in here, so we'll just clean this up. Looking for any more that looks funky. I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit control D. And with that, I think we're mostly blended there. Uh, the last step here that I would suggest, um, obviously get rid of the top where the crop is just off. I just want this at the original ratio. So we're going to pull that down. And again, pull this down and we'll just trim the edges there so go ahead and click on the finish button or the check mark we'll let it crop it and the last thing that I'll that I like to do here is just take the entire image and I'm gonna adjust the brightness because looking at this I think overall the image is just too dark but I do think that I've got the Milky Way in the foreground at least blend it together with their brightness so if I want to go print this, this will help with making sure that the whole image isn't just 
totally dark. All right, so I'm good there. Um, I think I said that brightening it was gonna be the last step, but I forgot. There's still a couple more things that I wanna do here. So let me make sure that I'm on the right layer. So we're gonna go down to noise, dust and scratches, and we're gonna tell it to go basically look for noise that is four pixels. And if you weren't paying attention there, let me show you one more time. Pay attention to these white hot pixels that are here. And go to noise, dust and scratches, and just like that, they disappear. So that'll make sure that you don't end up with a bunch of white dots in your photo. So the last item here is I want to go back into here. I do want to go into the camera raw filter again. And I want to just put a little bit of a gradient here. So we're going to go here, select linear gradient. And now I just want to draw this in just to help bring the viewer's eye into the image. So we're going to drop the exposure just a little bit here from the front. I don't want to go too dark and I actually want to expand this just a little bit. And what we can do, I don't want to darken these too much. We can just darken the shadows and that should help bring the viewer's eye in. All right, so with that, I am fairly happy, I think, with this edit. And what I want to do is go ahead and save this, which will take a second because you're going to have a fairly large file now that you've combined. All right, and with that, the image is done saving off. And let's go take a look back at it over here in Lightroom. All right, and there's the final image. I hope that this helps you out. Again, everybody's style is going to be a little bit different on how they approach their photos. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, I mean, this is the second time I've edited this photo, and I can tell you the way that I looked at the colors on it came out completely different than the way that I originally edited this photo. So if I jump back over here and we go into the original, you'll see that I definitely went more with a purple tone the first time. So we can take a look here. You'll see it's still blue, but definitely more purple. And again, this one, more purple, and I decided to bring out more of the green out of the mountain. Again, just for myself even, the way that I approach editing a photo can change every single time that I go into process but just having the technique of how I like to play with the colors and adjusting and what I want to see at that time, that plays a big role in how I approach the editing process. So before I wrap up here, um, now that you can see that photo, I do want to give a shout out just to the couple of people that have been very influential in the way that I edit photos and the way that I approach taking my photos. Uh, the first one that I want to point out is Richard Taddy. He is Nightscape Images on YouTube. I would highly recommend watching his videos if you're just getting started. He goes into a lot of crazy detail into Milky Way photography and I think is one of the best ones on YouTube at just showing his entire process for how he just captures the images and then also walking through how he edits them. The other person that I love their photos is Wayne Suggs, and he's a photographer out of New Mexico. I believe he also now works with Mark Munch, and I just really enjoy the look to his photos. It's very natural. He's actually the person that I learned about the low-level lighting technique from, and that kind of set me down the path to get me to the photos that I enjoy taking today. And then finally, for a really in-depth look at editing techniques and also just how to light paint that's outside of a YouTube video, Royce Fair has an awesome ebook on how to edit and also take Milky Way photos where he covers the equipment needed, different ways to light paint, his editing technique. Um, so a lot of information that you can get out of there that I think is really valuable especially when you really think about his ebook and how cheap it is. Uh, it's definitely worth a read and definitely something to go follow along with and try his editing technique. 
So if you've made it this far in the video, I really would appreciate it if you would smash the like button down below and also subscribe to see more content like this in the future. And as always, I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.